brethren. Greetings to our brethren on live stream. Glad you can join us today. If you would turn to Romans chapter 14, the focus will be on verse 16. And this passage reads, Let not then your good be evil spoken of. Now this particular text, your good, doesn't necessarily refer to like good works necessarily, but refers to the freedom that you have in Christ Jesus. The whole thought here is actually from 14 to 15, and then ending with 16. 14 stating that, that in Christ Jesus, there's nothing, clean, nothing unclean of itself, referring to the eating of meats, but then it falls in verse 15, saying that thy brother be grieved with thy meat, that walkest not charitably. Destroy him not with thy meat, for whom Christ died. And then it says, let not your good be evil spoken of. Now as God's children, we're not like under ceremonial law. Which, which under that law, the certain meats were forbade to be eaten. We are free to eat all meats. And you have this freedom to do what you esteem to be right, which may be right of itself. But the thought of this passage is not to make such use of this freedom as to do injury to others. This main passage here states that if your, brother, if the, your meat grieves your brother, destroy him not. That is, do not defile the conscience of your brother or lead him to do something that he believes is wrong or offensive to the Lord. And it's good that we clarify that because often when Romans 14 is mentioned, it's usually to defend an opinion that you have. Like, well, see, people don't have the same biblical understanding, so you have to tolerate my opinion, I have to tolerate yours, we just do what we want. That's not necessarily what is being said here. The, th the context of Romans 14 is people that are serving the Lord, doing things as unto the Lord. So if it says that a brother, one brother eats meat and one brother eats herbs, it's unto the Lord. And in that regard, you are considerate of one another. If this brother here th believes, that, uh, this is like young, uninformed believers, but they're doing it. Un but they're doing what they do is unto the Lord. And if they, in any way, find that to be offensive to God, you are not to cause that brother to stumble by doing this in front of him. In other words, don't thrust this brother into the background. Such a thing can no doubt start, cause one to just stop living by faith. If you've led him, moved him to do something that he believes in his heart is wrong, offensive to God, when you give into that and you start doing things that you priorly, you previously thought were offensive, this can cause to just sloppy living. Yeah. And in that sense, you destro he's destroyed. Yeah. He's, li he's living for himself. He's no longer sensitive, so to speak. So we do have to keep this in mind with one another. And so with that in mind, I do I, I'm on, uh, admonish you to do what the scriptures say and consider one another and look on the interests of others. As a believer, our aim is to edify our brother, not cause them to stumble. That's the last thing we want to do. We take no delight in causing contention and strife among the brethren, and therefore do nothing that would stir up anger or cause fierce arguments among the brethren, but behave and speak in a way that promotes peace and fellowship. We are the children of light and shining lights in the world. We do not desire to do anything that opens door for evil reports to be made or, mock or mockery to be made among the brethren. Rather, we do things that encourage good and profitable report, maintaining a good and proper reputation among fellow believers. With these things in mind, I tell you, consider one another. There may be things you esteem to be right, and those things may very well be right of themselves, something that God has not condemned. If a, but all, not all believers have the same understanding as of right now. Like, we are all growing in the faith. I mean, I remember in my experience, there were things that I believed before that I've grown out of. But the brethren were merciful and patient with me in that regard. And because of that, that helped me grow because they were patient. So if a weaker brother, like, you know, speaking in terms of scripture, if a weaker brother refuses to eat meats and prefers herbs, don't judge him. If a brother is offended by eating meats offered to idols, don't eat that meat in that brother's presence and cause him to perish. Don't let your liberty be a stumbling block to those who are weak. Help your fellow brethren stand and grow in his faith so that he might please God. And as he grows, understanding will become more harmonious over time. Now, sadly, the modern church has dropped the ball in this area, encouraging believers to do as they please with no regard to the impact they have on the fellow believers around them. Men do as they please in the church and don't seem to care at all about their con how their conduct affects others. Bottom line, we don't live for ourselves, but we live humbly before the Lord and to each other. I encourage you 
to always seek the betterment of your brethren and give no occasion for stumbling. Like in order to like really do what these passages are saying, you really have to just crucify the flesh and put yourself in the background. You have to give no regard to yourself, your interests. Like that, that's not your primary goal. When you come in, me, me, me. What's going to help me? What's going to be? It's coming. Oh, I'm going to help you. Yeah, that's right. And I will, I will do things that will make betterment for you. Yeah. I will not violate, do things that will violate your conscience. I will not force you to do things that you believe are wrong. So be considerate, courteous, and thoughtful to each other. By doing this, we help each other grow and not hinder each other from pleasing the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We will now pray for Sister June. She will come and lead us in our Bible class.